So it's kind of distressing that we're already on the seventh iteration of Microsoft's iconic Surface Pro convertible, or at least it's distressing for me because I was already an old git when I reviewed the original model. But here we have it, the Microsoft Surface Pro 7, which boasts a serious performance boost and a bit of a specs upgrade over the previous generation. Now I've been using the Surface Pro 7 as my personal laptop to see if this latest model is a worthy portable pal, and here is my full Microsoft Surface Pro 7 review. And for more the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notification as well. Cheers. So there hasn't exactly been a huge amount of change for this latest iteration as far as design goes. The Surface Pro 7 is still an impressively slender metal beast, considering all the smarts packed inside, even if those screen bezels aren't as skinny as the sexy new premium Surface Pro X. Your selection of ports is still unsurprisingly limited, but you do get some tasty new Type-C USB action alongside that full-size USB port for hooking up wide peripherals. And as usual, you've got a micro SD memory card slot tucked away to expand the 128 gigs to one terabyte of storage. And if you're already spunking out lots of cash on the Surface Pro 7, I definitely recommend stumping up a little bit more and grabbing yourself the official Microsoft Surface Folio keyboard. This helps to protect the Surface Pro 7's mighty display when you're hitting the road and of course converts it into a makeshift laptop when needed. That and the ever trusty kickstand of course which can be pulled out of the back end. It is perfectly engineered so you can open it to almost any angle going and it's just the right level of stiff as well to effortlessly support that display while you poke and prod away. And I'm definitely still a fan of that Surface Keyboard as well, which has actual proper push buttons that move when you smash them, unlike alternatives from the likes of Apple. And sure, the travel has less depth than the average Instagram influencer, but what do you really expect given that flat design? Those keys are a respectable size too. The arrow keys aren't obnoxiously cramped in the corner, while that return key gets two full rows to breathe. Hallelujah. And you even get a proper bit of backlighting so you can work through the night when the boss man is riding you hard. Of course, the laptop style setup is all well and good if you're just going to be sat there at a desk or a table or whatever, but if you're actually traveling about the place, it is less than convenient unless you're using it in the tablet mode. The Surface Pro 7 is definitely a great way to take in a digital mag or a bit of Netflix on the go, but as soon as you try to actually use it as a laptop, you are entering a world of awkward fumbling as you precariously perch the Surface Pro on your lap. It works, but it's not as comfortable as a proper laptop. But of course, the brilliance of the Surface Pro 7 is the fact that you can convert it into that tablet style format when you are on the move, and it's an absolute joy to use. Sure, it's not as light as an iPad at almost 800 grams, but it is comfortable enough to clutch thanks to those wide bezels. And those touch controls work perfectly, so browsing the web, playing around with documents, whatever, is an absolute delight. As always, you can get busy with the optional Surface Stylus as well for a proper bit of precision. Well, that will, of course, cost you a little bit of extra cash. Annoyingly, there's no dedicated storage hole for that stylus here on the Surface Pro 7, though unlike on the more premium Surface Pro X. That is kind of irritating, but at least the magnetic connection holding the stylus onto the side of the Pro 7 is pretty damn strong. You gotta give this thing a serious tug to really get it off. Ugh. And I did enjoy, as always, working on that 12.3 inch display, which is crisp and pleasingly punchy. It's not an OLED panel, sadly, and there's no dedicated HDR support, but those contrast levels are pretty impressive. You'll really notice it when you're watching a moody bit of Netflix with finer details appearing in those darker areas. You also get over 400 nits on top brightness levels as well, which is perfect for working outdoors, while a 2736 by 1824 pixel resolution keeps your visuals pin sharp. However, while the Surface Pro 7 can be relied on to dependably pump out some nice vivid hues. Unfortunately, the color accuracy is rather lackluster compared with rivals such as Dell. So only 90% of the sRGB gamut and around 60% of the Adobe RGB gamut were reliably and accurately covered off, which is a shame if you want to do some dedicated creative work. And the audio output isn't too special either. On top of volume, you'll have no worries watching Netflix in a noisy kitchen, but that sound, which is pumped out of these narrow gaps in the edge, is rather flat. Definitely not great for music. Thankfully, you do have a 3.5mm headphone jack on the edge and a reliable bit of Bluetooth 5 support as well for when you do want to connect some phones. As for that 5 megapixel front facing web camera, it's neatly positioned right in the centre here just above the display. Absolutely perfect for all of your Skype sessions and everything. If anything, it captures you in a bit too much detail. Now on the performance front, things get a wee bit complicated as you can grab the Surface Pro 7 with a wide variety of different internals. Thankfully, all of the new SKUs sport a 10th gen Intel iSlate platform, so even the most basic setups pack a decent bit of grunt. The entry level Surface Pro 7 comes packing a Core i3 platform backed by 4 gigs of RAM, and that will cost you 800 quid. But if you want a Core i5 or even a Core i7, you'll definitely have to spunk up quite a bit more cash. This review model sports a Core i7 chipset backed by 16 gigs of RAM, and it'll cost you a grand and a half. 
Thankfully, and unsurprisingly, I got smooth results no matter what I was up to, and even when I tried a bit of light video editing or some gaming with those Iris Plus graphics, the Surface Pro 7 was generally up to it. More demanding gaming titles did understandably struggle, even on lower detail levels, while the Strange Brigade benchmark and regularly churned out scores under 30 FPS. But if you temper your expectations and limit yourself to older or less GPU intensive games, you will be just fine. And the storage is suitably quick as well, boasting strong read and write speeds. This Core i7 version of the Microsoft Surface Pro 7 actually boasts its own internal fan which just helps to keep that warm air moving out via the edge mounted vents, prevents the chassis from warming up too much, it seems pretty reliable and dependable and you can't really hear the fans unless you're in a whisper quiet room. As for the battery life, well in that area the iPad Pros are still the king but I did find that I got around 6 hours of mixed use from a full charge with most of that time spent working in Chrome while streaming music. Of course, if you are doing some gaming or anything intensive like that, you can expect that figure to drop somewhat. Oh, and a quick word of warning as well, when you are traveling abroad, don't forget to pack the proprietary Microsoft Surface Pro charger as well. I found that I could keep this tablet powered up using the Type-C USB port here in the UK, but whenever I traveled abroad, unfortunately, those low voltage power points did not play ball. So that's my full in-depth Microsoft Surface Pro 7 review after using it as my own personal device. As you can see, not a huge incrementation over the previous generation apart from where the performance is concerned. Definitely a very solid all-round tablet. That convertible convenience is definitely the major drawn factor of this thing. I'd say if you're going to be traveling a lot then maybe look at a more dedicated laptop because that form factor isn't really well suited to balancing on your lap when you're sat on a train or a plane or something like that. But if you want something that's going to convert into a tablet quickly and easily with zero effort whatsoever, job done. So are you tempted by the Surface Pro 7 or perhaps you've already been using one? I'll definitely let us know your thoughts down in the comments below and please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. Cheers everyone, love you.